Hello everyone. Welcome to the video lecture on Laplace transform. So this is the first part of the video I have made for the undergraduate students. In this, I just want to introduce Laplace transforms and also do some problems. First, let us see the basic definition of Laplace transform. Given a function f of t for t greater than or equal to 0, we define an integral 0 to infinity e raised to minus st f of t dt. Now you can see that after evaluating this integral, this will be a function in s. So we denote it with the capital F of s. The transformation from small f of t to capital F of s is denoted by script L and it is called Laplace transform. Even though this is the formula to find out the Laplace transform of f of t, we have a working formula. That is limit b tending to infinity integration from 0 to b e raised to minus st f of t. Here infinity is replaced with a variable b and a limit from b to infinity is taken. After this we can do our first problem. This is a very simple problem because here f of t is equal to 0. So replacing f of t with the 0 in the formula we can see that the integration or before integration everything becomes 0 and therefore L of 0 is equal to 0. Let us do another problem. So L of 1. So by definition L of 1 it is in limit integration from 0 to b e raised to minus st into 1 dt. Here we need to integrate e raised to minus st which is e raised to minus st by minus s. Limits are from 0 to b. Which is equal to e raised to minus sb when substituted with b and e raised to 0 when substituted with uh, 0. So which means that we get e raised to minus sp minus 1 by minus s. Now if we assume that minus s is greater than 0, then you can see that e raised to minus sp tends to e raised to minus infinity, that is 1 by infinity, which is actually 0. Hence, we get the final answer as 1 by s, that is L of 1 is 1 by s. So far we have done two basic problems. Here we need to note that L of 1 is equal to 1 by s if s is greater than 0. Next, we are going to evaluate the Laplace transform of the exponential function. That is what is L of e raised to at. Coming to that problem, we have by definition it is limit b tending to infinity e raised to that is 0 to b integration from 0 to b e raised to minus st into e raised to at dt which we can rewrite to integration from 0 to b e raised to minus s minus a into t. Upon integration, we get integral of e raised to minus s minus a t is e raised to minus of s minus a divided by minus s minus a whose limits are from 0 to b. When substituted with b, we get this as e raised to minus s minus b and when substituted with the 0, we get it as e raised to 0, which is actually 1. Once again, assuming that s minus a is greater than 0, we can replace or when evaluating the limit, we can see that e raised to minus s minus a is tends to e raised to minus infinity, which is actually 0. Hence, we can obtain the final answer as L of e raised to a t is equal to 1 by s minus a, comma, if s minus a is greater than 0. So, so far, we have evaluated the four or five functions to calculate the Laplace transform. That is, we have e raised to at has the Laplace transform 1 by s minus a and we need to further evaluate for many other functions including the Laplace transform of t and the Laplace transform of t raised to n in general. Coming to that, let us consider Laplace transform of t. So by definition again, this is limit b tending to infinity, integration from 0 to b, e raised to minus st. What is f of t here? f of t is l of t. Sorry, f of t is t. But here you need to change the order of the integration. So, rewriting this to integration from 0 to b, t into e raised to minus st dt, we can 
once note that here t is the first function and e raised to minus st as the second function. So by the product rule for integration, this is first into integral of second minus integral of derivative of first into integral of second. So we can rewrite this as limit b tending to infinity first into that is t into integral of e raised to minus st is e raised to minus st by minus s minus integral of derivative of t is 1 and integral of e raised to minus st is e raised to minus st by minus s. Here you need to give the limit from 0 to b for the first part. Now this is equal to limit b tending to infinity. So when substituted with the b we get this as b into e raised to minus s b by minus s and when substituted with the 0 we have 0 into e raised to 0 which means it is 0 and for the second part it is minus limit b tending to infinity here we need to take the integration of e raised to minus st so the e raised to my the integral of e raised to minus st is e raised to minus st by minus s since there is a minus s already in the denominator it becomes e raised to minus st by s square and the limit a are from limits are from 0 to b now evaluating the first part we can see that as b tending to infinity there is a b tending to infinity however there is also e raised to minus infinity so since e raised to minus infinity dominates b which tends to infinity we get the first part completely equal to 0 also for the second part when substituted with the when uh, taken limit from b tending to infinity we can see that e raised to minus st tends to e raised to minus infinity which is actually 0 and when substituted with the 0 e raised to 0 gives 1 so the, therefore the second part becomes 0 minus 1 by s square evaluating everything we get the laplace transform of t is equal to 1 by s square now to evaluate or to find out the Laplace transform t raised to n, we first find out another formula. That is, show that L of t raised to n is equal to n by s into L of t raised to n minus 1. Once we get this, we can continue with the L of t raised to n by the following formula, which is n by s into L of t raised to n minus 1, where you can replace this L of t raised to n minus 1 with the same rule as used for t raised to n, which means it is n into n minus 1 by s square into L of t raised to n minus 2. Now going like this, you can finally evaluate the actual value of Laplace transform of L of t raised to n, which we will be doing later. Now coming back to our problem to show that L of t raised to n is equal to L of t raised to n by s into L of t raised to n minus 1, we start with our basic formula. But here we can see that here we need to interchange the order. Here we need to change the order of the integration. For that we change this to integral from 0 to b t raised to n to e raised to minus st. Here t raised to n is the first function and e raised to minus st is the second function. So with that you have to integrate like first into integral of second minus integral of derivative of first into integral of second. Hence, this expression becomes limit b tending to infinity t raised to n to e raised to minus st by minus s where the limits are from 0 to b. Here you can see that e raised to minus st is the second function. Hence, you can see that e raised to minus st by minus s is the corresponding integrals. Now, taking out 1 by minus s from the first part and n by s from the second part, we get an expression like this. But in the second term, you can see that limit b tending to infinity 0 to b t raised to n minus 1 e raised to minus st is actually Laplace transform of t raised to n minus 1 by formula. That is, the second part is actually n by s into L of t raised to n minus 1. Now what about the first part? Here the first part you can see that there is a limit b tending to infinity b raised to n by e raised to sb. If we evaluate that we can see that it is limit b tending to infinity. So there is a b raised to n. So b raised to n by e raised to sb. Tending b 
to infinity, we get this as infinity by infinity. Applying the L. Hopital rule, we can take derivative of the numerator. That is, taking the derivative of numerator, it becomes n into b raised to n minus 1. And uh, derivative of the denominator becomes s into e raised to sp. Here, the derivative is to be taken with respect to the variable b, since limit it since it is limit b tending to infinity. Therefore, it becomes s into e raised to sp in the denominator. But again applying the limit, we can see that this is also in infinity by infinity form. Now, once again applying the limit, b tending to uh, applying the L Hopital rule, we get this as n into n minus 1 by s into s. That is, we have taken the derivative of b raised to n minus 1 and e raised to sb from the numerator and denominator. Once again, it is infinity by in infinity. Continuing like this, we will finally arrive at limit b tending to infinity, n into n minus 1 into etc. into 3 into 2 into 1. And in the denominator, s into s into, there are n such s. And finally leaving 1 in the denominator and e raised to s b in the denominator. But once we take limit from b tending to infinity, at this stage, we obtain 1 by infinity, which is actually 0. Hence, we get the final expression for our actual problem is 0 plus 1 by s into, sorry, n by s into L of t raised to n minus 1. Once you get this, you can actually evaluate L of t raised to n as we have started before. So, L of t raised to n becomes, using this formula, n by s into L of t raised to n minus 1. There, you need to apply the same rule for L of t raised to n minus 1. Hence, it becomes n into n minus 1 in the denominator and s square in the denominator. Now, you can continue like this until you reach at n factorial by s raised to n. There, you need the Laplace transform of L of 1. But we already have that formula that is L of 1 is equal to 1 by s. So, replacing it with 1 by s, you will get L of t raised to n. That is Laplace transform of t raised to n is n factorial by s raised to n plus 1. So, we have done the Laplace transform of t raised to n using a recursive formula. Now, we have to do one more problem. But before that, we have a linearity property. We need to go through the linearity property of the Laplace transform. It is very simple that L of k into f of t is actually k into L of f of t, where k is a constant. Which actually means that you can take constants outside. Also, you have L of A into F of T plus B into G of T becomes A into L of F of T plus B into L of G of T. That is A into L of F of T plus B into L of G of T. So, there is a typo. I actually made it. It is B into L of G of T. Now, using this we can evaluate the following problem. Consider the Laplace transform of L of e raised to i a t. We already know that Laplace transform of e raised to a t is 1 by s minus a. That is L of e raised to a t is equal to 1 by s minus a. Hence, it is possible to replace a with i a and hence obtain L of e raised to i a t is equal to 1 by s minus i a. But being this a complex number, we can express it as real part plus i into imaginary part. For that, I multiply the numerator and denominator with, with the conjugate of the denominator. Hence, obtain s plus i a by s square plus a square, where s square plus a square is obtained by multiplying s minus i with s plus i a. Once we have that, I can write the real part of L of e raised to IAT as s square plus s by s square plus a square and the imaginary part as a by s square plus a square. Now, this is not actually the current problem. The actual problem is using this, you need to deduce the values of the Laplace transform of sin AT and cos AT. Okay, but it is now very easy using the linearity property of Laplace transform. For that, remember that we know that e raised to e, we know that e raised to i theta is cos theta plus i sin theta. Right. 
so that I can write e raised to iat. e raised to iat becomes cos of at plus i sin of at. Now taking the Laplace transform on both sides. On LHS you have e raised to iat. On RHS you have cos at plus i sin at. So taking Laplace transform on both sides we obtain L of e raised to iat is equal to L of cos at plus i sin at. But since we have the linearity property, we can write it as L of cos at plus i into L of sin at. But we know that we already have the Laplace transform of e raised to i at in real part plus i into imaginary part form. So using this, we can identify L of cos at as s by s square plus a square and L of sin at as a by s square plus a square. So this problem becomes very easy. Now, as a summary, we can see that we have evaluated the Laplace transform of these functions. Now, using this, you can do the following problems. Here, the 11th problem is a small challenging problem. For that, I am going to give you a hint. You know that sin h a t is actually e raised to a t minus e raised to minus a t by 2. Now, what is the use of that? So, in order to evaluate Laplace transform of sin h a t, you just need to evaluate Laplace transform of e raised to a t minus e raised to minus a t by 2. So, which you can do by the linearity property of Laplace transforms. So, do the problems carefully and learn the very basic details of Laplace transform. Thank you.